Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to discuss hypokalemia. I'm going to include the causes, assessment, and interventions. My name is Christina, nurse practitioner. Let's get started. So I'd like to begin with potassium level. So a normal potassium level is anywhere from 3.5 to 5.0. So your patient that is hypokalemic, they would have a level less than 3.5. This is a very essential electrolyte for your body to help regulate it. So it can be life-threatening when you have a severe deficit with potassium. So some of the causes, some of the causes could include medication induced. One of them is diuretics such as Lasix. In addition to that, you can also consider your corticosteroid medications as well, like your steroids. It can also be caused from excessive prolonged NG suctioning, your patient that has severe vomiting and diarrhea. In addition to that, it can also be from your patient that is NPO, nothing by mouth, or they may be fasting, that can also decrease their levels. Cushing syndrome also contributes to this as well as it increases an excessive amount of aldosterone. In addition to that, kidney disease contributes to it and excessive potassium, moving from extracellular into the intracellular within your cells also contributes to alkalosis and high levels of insulin as well. Moving on to assessment findings. So for cardiovascular, this is your patient that is going to have that weak thready pulse. They can have orthostatic hypotension, dysrhythmias. If you look to the side, you can also have ST depression, um, T wave inversion, or a peaked U wave as well. For respiratory, this is your patient that has like a shallow breathing. Um, and then also you're gonna see if you drew a arterial blood gas, they may be alkalotic, their pH. This patient can also have anxiety, maybe some muscle weakness, and they can have decreased tendon reflexes, so they could be hypoactive as well. For GI, gastrointestinal, you're gonna see nausea, vomiting, potentially a paralytic ileus, constipation, dehydration. These are all contributing factors. Moving on to intervention. So as a nurse, you want to definitely monitor the potassium levels. You want to treat the potassium, at least notify the doctor, say um, they need to replenish it, so it is usually replenished by PO potassium or IV potassium as well. So if it's PO, you wanna make sure that the patient has consumed a full meal because it can be upsetting for the patient's stomach. And if it is IV route, you wanna make sure that it is not irritating to the patient's vein because it can be very irritating and you can help um, the patient by decreasing the rate or adding on a piggyback like normal saline to help dilute it and it's more comfortable for the patient. In addition to that, you also want to consider the patient's safety. If they're having any muscle weakness, make sure that fall precautions are in full force. Make sure that the medications that they're currently, do, they're currently taking, that you review those medications, like if there are any diuretics. You want to make sure that um, it is not the cause or maybe the dose or the frequency is too much for the patient where they can't handle it. So maybe they need to taper it down or replenish it with potassium or consider adding on a potassium sparing medication like aldactone. So making sure you review the patient's electrolyte levels and you also inform the patient of appropriate food choices that contain potassium like spinach, uh, raisins, um, cantaloupe, bananas. These are all options that the patient can consume to help increase their potassium levels. Again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and hit that like button.